Lesson 4. Basic Data Types There are many data types in C++, but we will cover only four of the most commonly used types here. These types are the int, double, char, and bool. We saw int type variables before, and we know that they can take on integer values like negative 3, 0, or 12. Likewise, we saw double type variables, which we know can take on integer or non-integer values like negative 32, 0.5, or 3.14. Now, char is short for character, and char type variables are typically used to represent single keyboard characters like A, plus, or 2. They can even represent non-visible characters like tab, or the end line that we used in our cout statements. Finally, the bool type is short for boolean and comes from boolean algebra which was named after the mathematician George Bool. The bool type is a logical type and can only have two values, true or false. Since we have already covered ints and doubles somewhat, we will give some code examples using chars and bools. In this first example, we initialize a char with the value d. Then, we display it and request another value from the console window and display that. Notice that we put single quote marks around it. This is C++ syntax. Here's the execution output. Immediately D is displayed and then the program waits for input. We then type a G and hit enter to send the G from the console window. When inputting data from the console, we need to hit enter to let the program know to take the data. We mentioned that char type characters could take the value of a tab or endline. The syntax looks a little strange though. Here's an example program. Notice that the endline and the tab use a backslash followed by a character for their syntax. Executing the program, we see that the endline shifts down a line, the tab character shifts right, and then the D character is outputted. We have one last program. This program has two bools which we assign the values true and false. Notice that these words are in blue. This is because true and false are keywords in C++. Running the program, we see that the values correspond to 0 and 1, respectively. This concludes the lesson.